Hey everybody, welcome to the next episode of Model Building Start to Finish. This is John, I'm sitting here with Dan as usual and we're looking at the Ace Feed and Supply O Scale Feed Store. And last time we guess got it ready to be assembled, so what are we going to do this time? Uh, well, we're going to do a little bit of pre-weathering and then we're going to go ahead and start assembling the kit. A lot of this stuff is easier before all the windows and doors are added. So what I've got is some water mixed with some glass cleaner as kind of a wetting agent, so to speak. I'm going to just brush this on. This is going to be a wash, isn't it? Yeah. Trick to wash is, is you know, not to overdo it. And the other thing is to try to avoid full-size water droplets because they look really bad on a building that's made to be, uh, you know, to a scale. Right, because water doesn't scale down just because the surface is smaller, right, that you're putting it on. Right. So I get this nice and wet. Now I have my wash, which is some uh, glass cleaner mixed with some black acrylic paint. And I'm just going to start flowing it in there. This is going to hopefully highlight the uh, seams, all mm -hmm. those seams between the wood planks. And also, p there is some wood grain texture molded into the plastic. And it'll hopefully uh, pick up some of that as well and give the boards a slightly aged look. And the reason you're using the glass cleaner, also known as Windex, yeah, is? If you just use plain water, there's too much surface tension. And it um, doesn't work very well. So, so it actually makes the water droplets, if you will, smaller, kind of? Is exactly, that what it's, what yeah. It's doing? Now I'm, I'm taking my brush and streaking it across and I'm wiping it on a paper towel to kind of get rid of some of the excess. Yeah, it looks like it's picking up some of the black. Yeah. Again, I think subtle is better than uh, overdone. So this will just help. I could see going heavy handed with this if you knew where you were going to put the building and if the story behind the area where the building is, there's a lot of dust, storms, or wind or something like that that would right that and would it pound dirt into the side of the building right? it depends on how decrepit you want the building to look too if it's supposed to look like a building that's still being used you probably want to go a little lighter as opposed to a building that's derelict so i decided i want to add a little more so i'm just going to repeat the process one thing nice about if you do very light washes you can always add more um, very difficult to take it off if you put on too much that seems to be a recurring theme with these processes. Right. A lot easier to put the weathering on than it is to take it off. You can even draw it down like this, vertically, and that kind of spreads it around. And then go back to doing the horizontal streaks. trying to get rid of these little bubbles and anything else that might cause weird spots to appear. I can tell it's already looking a lot better, like yeah, a lot yeah. more yeah, done, right? Yeah. I, I think, Dan, it's probably worth mentioning, in case people watching don't realize what a wash is, is that washes have very little pigment at all. It's mostly, you know, a thinning, thinning material, right? Right. This is a probably about 80 percent well actually what i'm doing right now is just glass cleaner and water yeah. but uh, the paint mixture i have is probably about 80 percent glass cleaner and about 20 percent paint uh-huh so it's worth mentioning that because i know sometimes it, it is a very subtle effect even on camera mm -hmm. and really i think the point to what dan's doing here is to sort of pick out the seams a little bit and just the detail like he was saying before to maybe show some of that wood grain that's in there and make the seams in between the panels, right, in the simulated panels of the siding to show up because on a real building, dust and dirt and cobwebs and stuff collect in there, and that's kind of what it looks like. Right. And I'm thinning this further by um, using that wetting agent, too. So it's actually very little paint. I can use the same technique on some of these brown parts. Oh, 
Oh, so this is just the wedding, pre, this is, pre-wedding or whatever? Yeah. And in fact, on this, I could probably be a little more heavy-handed because it's already dark. And I want to do some more with this anyway. It's not as noticeable when you're on a dark color like that. Yeah, exactly. And I can also do the same thing on all these windows and doors. I've been kind of enjoying watching this full sheet of taped on stuff the whole time going through the process. Yeah, well, it's certainly convenient to handle the parts with them all on a, you know, piece of mat board is what I'm using. Yeah. So I painted the chimney the same uh, light concrete color that I painted the base. And now I have some uh, red oxide paint on a micro brush that I've wiped on a towel so I can just dry brush and dry brush some brick on here and hopefully leave the mortar, mortar lines looking concrete color. Yeah, there's 101 ways to do bricks, isn't it? Yeah, there's lots of different ways. This way, I, I don't know, I'm trying to remember if I've seen you do this before, but this works really well because you're, you're getting the mortar lines as well. Uh, really, they look really good. I think we did this once on a podcast a while back. Yeah, it was for N-scale buildings, wasn't it? Yeah. Something like that. What I like about this method is that you can kind of vary the amount of red so that if you want, you know, faded looking brick, you just don't put so much. Yeah. And on a, even on a single chimney like this, you may have places where it was rebuilt or fixed or whatever. So that it could look like that. Uh, I'm always yeah. yeah I'm always intrigued with bricks how people do bricks just because there are so many ways to do it also you could have you could have painted bricks right we I think that was one of the one of the techniques you showed on that podcast you were mentioning right so now that I've gone over this with some oxide red this is model master paint by the way I have some boxcar red and I'm going to just touch some of the bricks with that for just a slight variation in color it's very subtle is that one darker? Slightly. Yeah. But this is what I was talking about, though. Real chimneys. I know I've seen a few in my life. I was a chimney sweep once in a previous life. They have different color bricks. So I think what you're doing is another touch of realism. Yeah. So now that everything's painted and slightly weathered, I can go ahead and start putting the kit together. Mm -hmm. So essentially now I'm starting with what Atlas calls step one. Okay. Um, and that's putting the windows in. Um, and they pretty much fit really well, just drop in. And what I'm doing is gluing them from the back with some liquid styrene cement. So I'm using same stuff from Micromark. And just same stuff. Yeah. It's basically like what Ambroid was, but I don't think you can get Ambroid anymore. Right, and ten, what was the other one, 10X? Ten 10X, ten yeah. yeah. Um, but anyway, don't press too hard because you don't want the uh, plastic window frame to smush out as it melts, you know. Yeah, it oh. melts the plastic just a little bit, right? Isn't that how that works? Yeah. So these large side pieces have mounting holes for the door tracks, however... There's one, two, three, and the fourth one is missing. Um, it's because oh, it's weird. not through all the way. Oh, so you can see it from the back? Yeah, if I flip the piece over. Oh, so we right can just ream it out there? Or? Yeah, I'm going to drill it out with a 1 16th drill bit. This is actually slightly small. Mm hmm. But then I can uh, finish enlarging it just by spinning an X Acto blade in there a little bit. So it's easier to put the door on if you put it on before both tracks are installed. Oh, I see, because you have to squash it, kind of. Yeah, it is short enough. I think you could probably work it in there anyway. And as it turns out, I had to enlarge these bottom holes a bit, too, maybe because of the paint, the thickness of the paint. Yeah. Looks like it kind of snaps in, huh? Yeah, they're pretty tight, but I, I went ahead and glued them from the back anyway. Um, now, if you want to leave this door loose so you can open and close it you uh you can do that um however it's a little bit it looks wobbly yeah it doesn't uh fit in there especially well so 
I think on mine, I'm just going to glue them shut because there's really nothing to see on the inside of the building anyway. Yeah. The um, store's closed. Yeah. Unless you were going to build an interior and put something in there, I, I don't know really why you'd want the door open. Uh, another thing might be obvious, but um, when putting the windows in, make sure the sill is on the bottom. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I could see do it. I would do that too. I would not pay attention. <laughs> and then later on, like sometime next week when it was all done, uh -huh. I'd be looking at it going, Something doesn't look right about the windows. And then I'd be like, oh, duh. <laughs> Atlas also recommends putting the window glazing on the backs of the windows when you glue the windows in. But I'm going to wait on that. Okay. And why is that? Because I'm going to want to do some other things to the building involving paint and weathering. And I don't want to get the windows all gucked up. Oh, otherwise you might spray them or yeah. paint them or something. Yeah. So for now, i um, going to skip that. It's easy enough to put them in later. Um, anyway, step two in the Atlas instructions is to start assembling the building and the corners have these little, uh, little tabs that lock together. Uh huh. So you can basically just kind of push it and it, it is even designed as sort of, if you wanted to just snap it together and then be able to take it apart and store oh. it in pieces, you could do that. Oh, right. Um, I don't want to do that. I'm just going to permanently glue it together. Okay. So I'm going to use the same glue that I've been using. Oh, just in the corner, huh? Yeah. So now I've got the major components of the building assembled. And the next thing I want to do is light proof it because I want to put some lighting in it. So what's this little dog house in front here? This is the piece that goes on the roof. Oh, on the top. Yeah. Okay. yeah. It just looks like an extra shack or something. Yeah. <laughs> So how are you going to light proof it? With some black paint. The reason I didn't spray it first is because um, glue doesn't work very well over paint and I wanted to glue the corners. Uh huh. So I wanted to leave it unpainted on the inside before I glued it. So I think since it doesn't have to be a great paint job, I'm just going to uh, brush paint it. All right, so now I've painted the inside black, which should help the building not to glow when I put lights in it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So now I think I can go ahead and put the building on its base. So before I glue the base to the building, I want to weather it a little bit. So I have some raw umber pan pastel here and a stiff brush. I'm just going to get a little bit and kind of scour the surface just to dirty it up a little. So the building actually rests just outside of all those pegs that are sticking up. Is that it? Right, so I really only have to do this. This part that's sticking out right here is really the part that I care about because yeah. um, the rest of it won't really be seen anyway. It's making it look like walked on cement, so this is good. Yeah, and just kind of randomly smearing it around. It doesn't have to be even. In fact, it looks better if it's not. Hey. It's one of those moment of truth things, kind of. Right. So at this point, we can go ahead and attach the building to the base. And there are these little tab things on the base oh. and corresponding tabs on the walls. Just like in the corners, huh? Right. And they all fit together. And this only fits one way. But basically, the side of the building with the holes in it for the loading dock goes where the base comes out because this goes under the loading dock. So just need to put this down and fit it over all those tabs. I'm noticing one nice thing about this too is that the base itself looked like it had holes. So even if you glued this on, you could still access the inside of the model. And right. Yeah, I didn't notice that before. I thought the base was solid. No, uh, it's, that's a good thing, actually, yeah. for doing lighting or, or things like that. So now I'm starting to install the supports for the loading dock, which fit in these little holes. Unfortunately, uh, maybe because of the paint or maybe because of a little bit of flash, the holes are too small. Oh, no way. So I'm getting a round file and spinning it around in there to open them up a little bit. So now I have the uh, loading dock supports glued on, 
And I think this might be a good place to stop because after this, I'm going to start adding some things that aren't part of the kit to enhance it a little bit. Oh, Dan style details. Yeah. So um, up until this point, it's been pretty much straight out of the box. So I think this this is a good break, and next time we'll pick it up and start uh, making a few modifications and adding some details. That's what the name of it will be, Dan. Dan style details. Okay. Episode three year. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We'll see everybody next time. Okay.